Ferrets are a member of the mustelid family. Um, many people know them as kind of a, a weasel, but that family is pretty remarkable. It includes the weasels, um, the ermine, as well as um, badgers and wolverines. And I always like to think that ferrets are like a weasel with a wolverine attitude. Ferrets are really amazing. We actually thought they were extinct back in the 1970s. We thought we had lost the, the last wild population and we didn't have any in captivity. And then in 1981, um, a ranch dog in Wyoming uh, brought home a, a little dead animal. And the, the rancher's wife looked at it and said, this is kind of interesting and took it to someone. And, and they said, well, that's a black-footed ferret. And so that was the, the population that was found in Matitsi, Wyoming, and every ferret we have right now is descended from seven of those individuals. That colony, when we found it, was about 120 some ferrets out there, and then it started to collapse. Um, the state of Wyoming and the Fish and Wildlife Service went in and started capturing animals, and we're able to capture something like 16, and we're able to get seven of those to breed. So one of the first steps in federal recovery of this species was to figure out a way to get those captive ferrets to breed. Um, like I said, there were seven ferrets that successfully did that. And they, the ferrets in the captive program are spread between the National Blackfooted Ferret Conservation Center, which is um, managed by the Fish and Wildlife Service. It's, up, it's here in Colorado, it's up north of um, Wellington. And then um, there are seven or eight different zoos across the continent, one in Toronto and others here in the US that have captive breeding programs as well. So all of the ferrets that are produced each summer, it's determined whether or not their genetics are important for the captive program or if they're able to go out into the wild. If they're going to be released, they'll actually go to the National Blackfooted Ferret Conservation Center for the preconditioning pens. And what they do there is they move them into outdoor pens. They're enclosed pens, so they're protected from predators, but they start to learn how to live in underground prairie dog burrows. So how to get around in the prairie dog burrows. Um, they're also given live prairie dogs in, in the outdoor pens so they can learn how to hunt. They get a little bit of exposure to um, predators flying around, as well as the center sits within a prairie dog colony. So they start to hear the sounds and the smells of, a, of an actual outdoor natural environment that they're gonna be released into. Ferrets are very dependent on prairie dogs, both for food and for shelter. So over 90% of their diet is prairie dogs, and so they, they need to be in a healthy prairie dog town so they have plenty of food to eat. But they also live in the prairie dog burrows, so they need a healthy prairie dog town so that there are empty burrows for their, them to move into. And that's where they shelter from predators and from weather and things like that. So when we're looking for a, a black-footed ferret release site, here in Blacktail Prairie Dog Range, we're looking for at least 1,500 acres of prairie dogs. So that's, that's a pretty good sized prairie dog colony for the, the eastern side of Colorado. And the reason for that is each ferret needs about 30, 35 acres of prairie dogs for, an, for that individual ferret to raise her litter of, of kits every summer. So, to have a, a successful, viable population, we need a large prairie dog colony out there. So on the day of a ferret release, what happens is we're really lucky in that we're in the same state as the National Blackfooted Ferret Conservation Center. They load up each ferret in individual carriers and those carriers are all brought out to the site. They're, they're driven to the site that morning. Um, we usually do the releases in the afternoon um, towards evening. Ferrets are nocturnal creatures, so they're gonna be active during, during the night. So we don't wanna put them out too early in the day so that they're protected from the predators. And we get out to the site, we look for active prairie dog burrows, um, burrows that 
aren't closed up, don't have a lot of cobwebs or things in them, um, have some fresh scat around them. And if it looks like a site that the ferret might like, then we bring a carrier over to it and we open an individual carrier. And that's when we have to be patient. We, we wait for the ferret to actually decide to come out of the carrier on its own. Um, these are predators and they can be uh, a, a bit snippy you could say and so we don't actually reach in and grab them we let them walk out on their own and once they're out they usually go directly down the burrow um, we also bring with a little snack for them to get settled in before they understand the whole colony and who's out there so usually something like a small mammal a hamster a gerbil or even a portion of a prairie dog we'll drop that in the burrow with them a lot of times they're very curious animals, so they will pop back up out of the burrow after they're released. They'll look around, they might even decide to go to a different burrow. Part of that is because we don't know who's already down that burrow. There might be a big prairie dog, there might be a rattlesnake, there might be a turtle. Some reason that they don't actually want to be in that burrow and they'll go find another one that fit, works for them better. And it's, it's a great event, it's a great experience. And we, on the private lands, we always include the private landowners, um, have them come out and, and help us do the releases. We've also had the opportunity to bring um, children out, school groups, um, you know, usually in coordination with the landowner. With some of the public land releases that we've done, we've had the public come out to the releases. And it's, it's a it's a really fun day to put these animals out. Um, one of the things you hear a lot of when we're doing it is the ferrets chattering. They have a very high pitched chitter sound that when they're um, feeling a little threatened, they'll, they'll let that sound out. And you hear a lot of that when the releases are happening. Um, and it's just, it's a great opportunity to get some pictures. These are very secretive little animals and it's hard for people to actually go out and see them. Um, there are a number of live exhibit sites here in the state where, where the public can go see them. Um, and I always recommend people go to those sites. Uh, the Museum of Discovery in Fort Collins, the Rocky Mountain Arsenal in the Denver area, and I believe the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo still has ferrets on exhibit. So those are great sites to see them. And about the only time you're gonna spot them out in the wild is when we're actually doing a release and we're letting them out of their cages. It's very unusual. It's rated the best ferret display in North America because it looks like someone cut a chunk out of the prairie, a chunk out of the ferret's habitat, and set it right down here in the middle of the museum. Colorado is one of the states within the historic range of the black-footed ferret. And so we are participating in federal recovery for the species and then also undertaking work under our state um, ferret management plan. This has been a really rewarding project to work on. Difficult, but rewarding. Um, there's, there's so many moving pieces in a, in a reintroduction like this. And to be able to get all those pieces together, be able to successfully work with the various partners that we have within the program and the private landowners, the egg community, everybody engaged with this and, and be able to put these really remarkable animals back into the habitats that they belong in is, is so important. Um, I always say that when we did our first release back in 2013, um, the last time we had seen ferrets on, on the eastern plains of Colorado was a generation before me. And I mean, that's amazing. They had been gone from that ecosystem for that long. And so to be able to put those, those animals back into the ecosystem where they belong, um, it gave me goosebumps that time that we did that first release. And I thought, well, that, that's kind of cool. Um, but now I've been out on so many of these releases, I still get goosebumps every time we go out and do it. Sometimes it's because it's cold and windy. Other times it's because it's just, it's amazing. And to be out there with, with kids that really have, have probably not a great idea of how amazing it is that they're part of this process, but that's something that they're gonna remember forever to have been out on a release. We release blackbird ferrets, most endangered um, mammal or ant species on the continent of North America. But also to be out with the landowners and celebrating the, the success they've had on 
um, developing the prairie ecosystem on their lands is, is just remarkable. It's, it, it's, it's one of the highlights of my career and um, yeah, I, I look forward to watching um, the success continue when it's um, handed off to someone else.